In Paris, Sam attends a party thrown by his ex-girlfriend, but he isn't there to have fun, he just wants to take back his old tapes. His ex asks him to wait for a moment because she's busy with guests, so now Sam has to sit for a while and feel out of place. When he gets tired of waiting, he asks his ex to tell him where his things are because he'll take them himself. She guides him to an office and tells him to stay in there so they can talk later. Ignoring the drunk people in the corridor, Sam goes to the office and locks the door to look around in peace. When he finally finds his things, suddenly his nose starts to bleed, so he grabs some tissues and sits down to rest. Eventually he falls asleep, so when moments later there is lots of shouting and chaos outside, he doesn't hear a thing. The next morning, Sam wakes up and grabs his things to leave, but as soon as he opens the door, he's horrified to discover the entire place is a huge mess and there's blood everywhere. After grabbing a random object to defend himself, Sam checks outside the apartment only to discover all the party people including his ex have turned into zombies. As they try to attack him, Sam quickly closes the door. Then he looks outside through the window and discovers the same situation everywhere. Most people have turned into zombies and those that haven't are being chased and killed. The streets of Paris are a mess as well, and when a family tries to escape in their car, the horn noise attracts the zombies, who immediately surround and kill them. Next, Sam checks the jackets and bags the guests left behind and finds their cell phones, so he ends up listening to all their calls for help or even the last words they sent to their loved ones. When he doesn't hear any more noises in the corridor, he leaves the apartment and goes to the roof, but he doesn't see a single living person or any kind of help coming. Afterward, Sam decides to do whatever it takes to survive and starts by cleaning the rooms to get rid of all the infected blood. Suddenly he hears a strange noise from the apartment below right before a shot creates a hole on the floor. Sam looks through it and discovers that the neighbor downstairs self-deleted. Curious, he takes a metal bar from the wall and begins hitting the hole until it's big enough for him to go through. After covering the old man with a blanket, he checks on the other body and realizes the first sound he had heard had been the guy shooting his wife because she was infected, and then he couldn't live with it. Then Sam raids the kitchen for food, grabs the man's weapon, and takes all the bullets he can find. After making sure the corridor is clear of zombies, he comes out and goes downstairs, closing every door he sees on the way. When he makes it to the front entrance, he finds the zombies outside, so he rushes to close the door right before they can reach for him. Now that the building has been secured, Sam goes to the caretaker's room and grabs the keys to all the apartments while ignoring the zombie reaching through the window. He also finds a can of tuna that he quickly eats. Then he takes all the supplies and useful objects he finds there before organizing the keys by apartment number so he can use them to check each room. The first apartment he enters has a zombified family in it and Sam is attacked, but after some struggle, he manages to push the zombie off. Then he runs outside and closes the door to draw an X on it to avoid re-entering it in the future. Then Sam continues to check all the other apartments, which thankfully are empty. He gathers all the food he can find but sometimes he also takes other things like a paintball gun. Since Sam is a musician, he's happy to find an MP3 player, some old cassettes, and even a set of drums. Once he's done with all the apartments and has a mask to protect his face, Sam is closing up only to be startled by the elevator suddenly moving, which reveals a zombie inside. Since it isn't behaving violently, Sam doesn't kill him, instead he ties the iron fence with a belt to keep him from escaping. Later in the evening, Sam has food while listening to his old tapes, which brings lots of good memories. The next day, Sam watches the zombies outside for a while before organizing all the food he's gathered, rationing it properly and keeping a record in a notebook. He also uses the dirt on a window to draw a grid and start counting the days. Afterward, he goes back to looking around the apartment and eventually ends up playing the drums to release some tension. However, he must be careful because all the noise attracts the zombies to the window days start to pass and Sam tries his best to keep himself busy. He marks the days on the window, cooks his own meals, and sometimes at night he goes to the roof to watch the empty city. Using the paintball gun, he starts a game of shooting the zombies on the street and crossing them out on his ex's pictures. He also records sounds he makes with random objects and creates music with them. One day, Sam realizes there's a strong stench and looks into the apartment below to realize the bodies are rotting. He picks them up and takes them to the balcony, but he can't bring himself to throw them away like trash. Instead, he puts them inside sleeping bags and leaves them on their bed together with some of their important belongings. After offering a moment of silence, Sam leaves the room and seals the door with tape so the stench won't escape. 
Afterwards Sam takes a shower, only for the water to simply stop running. Later while he's in bed, he hears a weird sound and discovers a horde of zombies storming into his room to eat him. Sam yells in pain, only to wake up and realize it was just a nightmare. The next day Sam adds exercise to his routine. He starts running around the building while listening to music. When he stops by the elevator, he dares to shake the man's hand and decides to call him Alfred. Sometime later, it finally rains, so Sam uses lots of pots and containers to gather water and wash his body. Then he sits next to the elevator to smoke a cigar while having a one-sided conversation with Alfred, confessing that the hardest part is not knowing what happened to his family. Sometime later, Sam is at the window with the paintball gun again and is shocked to notice a cat on the streets. He immediately rushes downstairs and opens the door, making sure there aren't zombies around before opening a tuna can and offering it to the cat, who is hiding under a car. The cat is hesitant but can smell food so it slowly begins making its way towards Sam. However, a sudden noise scares the cat away. Worried, Sam puts down his weapon to leave the door open and begins sneaking around, trying to find the cat. He stays hidden behind cars, but a zombie sees him anyway and comes after him. Sam immediately gets inside the vehicle and kicks the zombie through the window, only to notice a second zombie is also coming. With a quick move, Sam moves into the back seat and escapes through the passenger door, then he runs back into the building and closes the door before the zombies can catch him. Once he's back in the apartment, Sam looks out the window and notices the cat is just chilling next to the zombies, so he shoots it. Then he turns around and sees blood on the floor, which makes him realize his leg was wounded by the zombie in the car. After cleaning the wound, he sits in front of a mirror with the weapon in hand. There are no signs of transformation but he can't be sure he isn't infected, so he puts the weapon in the right position to self-delete if it comes down to it. Sam just sits there for a while and eventually falls asleep, causing the weapon to slip and shoot a bullet. Thankfully it doesn't hit Sam, who wakes up to notice he hasn't changed at all and laughs happily. Sometime later while Sam is taking care of the plants, he hears a weird noise and yells a few words, but nobody answers. He looks through the window and notices a person in the building across the street, but he can't tell if it's a zombie or not. He goes to the roof for a better look, but there are no signs of life. It's starting to get cold now, so when he returns to the apartment, Sam makes a pillow fort and starts a fire to heat some water for a warm bath. While he's trying to relax, he hears noises again, but they quickly disappear. Later, Sam begins to worry about the amount of food he has left, so he grabs a bag and goes outside to look for supplies. However this turns out to be just his imagination, because in the end he doesn't dare to leave. Feeling incredibly lonely, Sam starts to drink in one afternoon. He yells at Alfred, mentioning how he hasn't seen any zombies for days and how they're both alone now. He accidentally spills some drink on Alfred, who starts shaking the door and causes Sam's rant to escalate into yelling. Furious about his current situation, he throws the bottle against the wall and runs back to the apartment. He's so desperate not to be alone that Sam begins playing the drums again and the noise brings back the zombies who gather outside the window trying to reach for a yelling Sam. Afterward, Sam apologizes to Alfred for all the things he said. Sometime later, Sam is rationing the little food he has left while listening to his old tapes again, and hearing the voices of his family makes him so upset that he pushes the things off the table. In the evening, Sam is waken up by a noise and this time he doesn't hesitate to shoot at that door. However, when he looks through the resulting hole, he's devastated to discover he shot a regular woman not a zombie. Sam picks her up and takes her to the bed, where he immediately tends her wounds and removes the bullet while begging her to stay with him. When he leaves the room, he discovers the woman's bag is there too, which has some rope and a hook. The next morning, Sam is grieving when he suddenly hears a noise and discovers the woman has survived. He feeds her some pigeon soup and learns more about her. She's called Sarah and she's been surviving by jumping from building to building using her hook. She's seen a few survivors hiding in apartments but most of them have become crazy. The zombies aren't good with heights, but she still never stayed more than a week in one place. Sam tells her it's safe in this building, but Sarah is still wary, explaining the shot from last night got the zombies attention and eventually they'll tear off the door because they have nothing better to do. Sometime later, Sam is doing his daily walk through the building and Sarah comes with him. She gets scared when they walk in front of Alfred, but Sam promises he'd never eat either of them. Afterward Sam begins making music again and is delighted to see Sarah helping him with it. In the evening, Sam smokes while chatting with Alfred and wonders if he'll be able to make it now that he has proper company. 
Eventually, there's almost no food left for both of them, so Sam has to take drastic measures. He returns to the door with the X, cuts a hole in it, and then shoots every zombie inside. Now he can safely go inside and take all the food he can find. Afterward he returns to his apartment and notices Sarah isn't there. He looks around and finds her on the roof, apparently she's looking for a way to leave soon. She wants to practice jumping toward the building across the street, but Sam protests because it's too dangerous. Sarah disagrees, explaining that if they stay they'll either go mad and self-delete, or the zombies will eventually manage to break down the door. Furious, Sarah storms back into the apartment. Sam follows her but when she doesn't answer, his mind starts catching up to what really happened. Sarah never woke up while Sam tended her wounds and her presence has been an hallucination. When Sam enters the room now, he finds her dead body on the bed and grabs her hand as he cries. Then he covers her with a sheet and candles to offer a proper goodbye. He also checks her bag again and finds a digital camera, so he looks through the pictures. At first all the photos are of Sarah and her family, but then he finds a picture of himself on the roof, confirming that Sarah had been the presence in the other building. Accepting the fact he's going crazy, Sam decides it's time to go. He starts by lighting all his old tapes on fire, then he grabs Sarah's bag and goes to the roof to escape. However, he remembers Alfred and decides to free him. Alfred doesn't attack, instead he follows him around, and Sam sends him into an apartment. At that moment, the burning tapes activate the fire alarm and the zombies finally break down the front door, desperately coming after Sam. He shoots as many zombies as he can but eventually they make him fall, so he pushes them away and decides to run instead of fighting. Now the elevator is free, Sam runs inside and closes the gate, ignoring all the hands reaching to try to grab him. Then Sam starts climbing up the elevator shaft and runs toward an empty apartment, but a zombie follows him there. Sam grabs the curtains and covers the zombie with them, managing to keep him distracted. However, when he tries to escape, he accidentally bumps against some objects on the floor and alerts the zombie of his location. Sam immediately reacts by hitting the zombie a couple of times and putting a couch on top of him to trap him. Afterward, Sam climbs on that couch and goes through the hole to return to his apartment, which is full of smoke. There are lots of zombies around too, but the smoke allows Sam to slowly walk around undetected. Eventually he makes it to the roof and uses Sarah's hook to throw the rope toward the other building. There's a zombie coming after him, so Sam jumps without much thought and hits his body against the wall. After a few seconds, Sam wakes up and is relieved to have escaped. There's a zombie at the window, so instead he climbs all the way to the roof and stares at the city skyline. Suddenly he hears some noises far away and hopes they were made by survivors. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.